first mixtape, it was me and my good friend Siri and Christy. And we all sit in room it for our project, which my user is making. And he employed me to create mixtape for said mixed media art installation piece for Belfast Metropolitan College. Made the first mixtape in about March, April time, 2017. And the public response was vastly overwhelming. Um, so we, we had to make a second. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for choosing to come on our booze cruise. Hope you're feeling it. Put your life jacket on. We're going down. Not a will be no humor in Northern Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please say that? <laughs> no, say that right there. There won't be no humor. <laughs> like, I can do like a sound effect from the back. Yeah, why did you know? I say it? Oh my god. There will be no humor, only. <laughs> Playing missionary sets. We've <laughs> 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 been married for at least 15 years. If you want to start off with an opening if monologue, you can it, go it, ahead. It's, it's, it's illegal. It's a sound effect. <laughs> There's just so many things going on inside my mind at once between fidget spinners and the fucking rest of the world. It's all crashing down. It's quickly colliding with me. And I need to get it out now. Nice. It's still gonna be pitch oh, shifted. Oh, the fuck is that? There's so many things going on inside my mind at once. Wait, can you just make the whole song and a chipmunk song? But make it a chipmunk song from the stock. All just incredibly high. Oh, that'd be so funny. And then pitch it down after the making normal. Fidget spinach in the Oh, I've got it. You could just open with fidget spinners and the rest of the fucking world. Fidget. Fidget. Oh, you gotta say we fucking fit fit fit. Yeah. Fidget. This really sounds like, um, fucking... What's that song? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, it's a Daft Punk song. That really sounds like. I'm gonna get lucky. Yeah, that one. Oh wait, that's good. it, name it, fax it, it, That actually has a rhythm to it. Give me the ganja. Give me, give me the ganja. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the alternative teenagers gave the suggested baseline the, the nod of approval. Fidget spinners and the fidget spinners. Alright, what kind of blows up? Fidget spinners. Right, so what about the fidget spinners and the fidget spinners and the fidget spinners and then just like a massive scream and then like and the rest of the fucking world. <laughs> And then we can start with the fidget spinner song. Fidget spinner. 
and then maybe do like a like progression into the golf cover of my little one to fifty. Why not? Yeah, no, me neither. Oh, I'm just gonna see just got a picture of a fidget spinner. <laughs> it's from an angle. <laughs> <laughs> so you know which way it's going as well. It's gendered as well. <laughs> no, it isn't it's gendered. It won't let me gender the fidget spinner. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, I called it a boy. When is somebody gonna get nude in my studio? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get comfortable. I'm just trying to get lucky. <laughs> 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 Alright, well, let's so, uh, Oh, Mashi's a long one. <laughs> oh wait, I got to call the loop. Oh, Owen, Owen, you want to say that? Back in the studio. Okay, so we've got a backing. <laughs> yeah. So either like a scream or like a really loud noise. Something to like, kind of like, scare people, but like comfort them too. They're afraid, but they like it. <laughs> yeah. They're like <laughs> nervous. at the start. <laughs> Are we keeping that in? I don't know. It could go like um, Owen and I met in a wonderful place called New York, New York City, the big, <laughs> the big apple. He was drinking a, I think it was a half bottle of, of Glenn's vodka. Yeah, he was he was being arrested. <laughs> I first met Husk amongst uh, many other people um, beside uh, one of one of Belfast's sort of skate park type areas um, called New York, the Big Apple, um, under uh, the train tracks in a uh, sort of commercial car park where everybody used to drink and um, and have to, you know fun live and learn. And play and grow together. I think uh, I think Husk um, was uh, was being arrested or uh, something to that effect. The first time I met him, his trousers fell down. He, I mean, he downed the vodka like it was terrible. Um, what was his first time drinking? I'm pretty sure, or he's publicly drinking in a car park with other youths. Um, and then he downed the vodka very quickly because he didn't want to drink it. And then uh, I think the police arrived. He he was incapacitated. <laughs> uh, his trouser did fall down while he was being pushed against a pillar by a police officer. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's definitely, he's definitely yelling stuff like, I don't know, I'm not saying he was yelling RIP, but he's definitely telling the man in a very aggressive and drunken manner to release him. Um, oh yeah, and then he told, he told, he told the police he was numerous people amongst our friend group. They are oh, they weren't him. I don't know if he gave my name, but he gave a lot of names that weren't him. You should incorporate some Scott Man John. <laughs> oh, we are gonna have a <laughs> Scott Man John. Skip it a bop ba ba do ba do. Scott. Skip a bop ba da da wa da ba da da. Skip a bop ba da ba da bi da ba da wo. See, I tried to do it, but then he got the scat. Yeah, he got the scat. You got the scat in your bones. I got the scat up in me. Alright, alright, so what what should happen after the intro? It flows very naturally. Usually he'll give me a sort of, um, he'll make a sound or he'll describe a sound. Loud guitar, loud beep, loud squelch, loud something. He's very good with sounds in here. Um, and then I'll try and replicate what he's thinking of, usually quite inaccurately, but then he'll like it anyway, he goes for most of the things that churn out for him. Either Owen slash Husk is a very, um, is very up for settling, 
um, or Chris was coming off with some songs that Owen was really pleased with. You aware of what you make me feel, baby. Right now I feel invisible to you, like you're not real. Do you feel me wrap my arms around you? Why'd you turn away? Here's what I have to say. I was left to cry there, sitting outside there, breathing with the fresh air. And that's when I decided, why should I care? If you weren't there when I was scared, I was so lonely. Yeah. I'm losing my grip, I'm in this thing alone. Well, I first knew him by Velma. Have you ever seen, you have, Scooby-Doo? Scooby-Doo, animated series. Um, she, uh, she has quite thick rimmed glasses, um, and nice, a uh, sort of cropped haircut, a sort of cropped ball. Um, a, a, a bright green jacket she wears. Husk used to wear this. Uh, no, orange. Orange. It's bright uh, green. Orange. It's bright orange. Puffa. Um, so I used to know him as Velma until eventually it uh, emerged that he was in fact Husk. We're not the first days. <laughs> Who the fuck is Thurides? <laughs> it might not look like it, but I go over a lot right now. <laughs> it's Charlie. It's restricted. Oh, there you go. Hello. It's like Area 51 day. Oh, like new music, Area 51 day. <coughs> like instead of aliens, it's like new music. <laughs> Secret government music, though. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, yeah. First time I met him properly, he uh, was. We were going to the library to study for our GCSEs, and uh, he was with Chris, and then he and Dora both kept pretending to have strokes whenever we were in the lift, and there was like other people in the lift or like in the revolving door of the library. They would just pretend to have strokes, and um, that was pretty funny. I was watching Celebrity Big Brother 2006 last night and it was really good. I watched the episode where Big Brother has a go with Jodie Morrish and he's like, You're insincere to the point of nausea! <laughs> <laughs> I made mean, an Instagram bio, I thought it was really good. <laughs> Some stuff would be more comfy actually. Oh, for me? It's for the stage show. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Is that real? <laughs> I'm thinking like high oh, fashion glam. We had one conversation. <laughs> no, it's a business. It's, 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 it's yours. Like, like it's your, this is your sister's fashion thing. Shirley, Shirley you did not like it. Holly yes. yes. Fulton. This, but this, but like this. Yeah, I'm thinking, I mean? I'm thinking oh, her, her legs. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like literally, they're yeah. like her legs. Her body. My face. Your uh, face. And this. Your, your abs. I want, I want it to be going inside the outside. But not. Yeah. But not exactly. Not. It's like yeah, yeah, ge yeah, yeah. it's like poetic geometry. It's almost as if it's doing it, but then not. Yeah. No, it's like yeah. you're fucking and then yeah. you just, you stop. I get that sometimes yeah. too, yeah. The first time I met Husk, it would be about seven years ago now. Um, we were in class, like, two group together. We were immediately quite drawn to each other for some uh, bizarre reason. And their friendship has pretty much flourished to the disgusting point it has reached since then. Kind of festered, I suppose, among them flourished. Larger than life kind of presence, you know, like his personality precedes him. And I think I felt that from the first moment I met him, yeah. You, you gotta stay oh, fresh in the studio. You gotta keep drinking. Yeah, one well, more people, like, really unsatisfying. Yeah. Can you play the beat? <laughs> For the last one, just play one note of balls. It's really like. Um, <laughs> like, like one finish feeling. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like one, like one note. That like it's really frustrating. Every time. It just stops. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It just like, stops. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it. Yeah. 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 Ye
you could see that there was nothing else like what he had done and um, I think it's just it's really different and kind of fresh way of bringing up sort of political ideas and stuff like because they obviously had pictures of Arlene Foster in it and then he had like pictures of Paris Hilton and like screenshots of it, like of her smoking videos and stuff and it's just kind of saying slight things about like celebrity life and just kind of like how it's all glamorized and stuff but he's doing it in the most kind of obscure and sort of like almost ridiculous way but it works so well. Well the first one had a very evident kind of like nautical sense to it. I think that was what he was going for but more than that it was pushing kind of societal boundaries perhaps through the means <laughs> of a nautical theme but um, yeah no I think it encompasses more than meets the eye. Um, frustration. Very uh, very garish. You know, somebody with a lot to say. Um, Somebody who's obviously been through a lot, you know. Seafood, uh, nautical imagery, um, Moby Dick inspired? Mixtape for Donna, so not Ickle, as in zero Ickle, I call not Ickle. Mixtape for, for, Donna, so not a cow. Makes it for Donna, so not a cow. Fish, chicken, by the sea, um, really enjoyed it. My particular favourite part of the mixtape would be uh, the extreme distorted Paris Hilton section. It all, it bloomed from a place of yearning for the sea. Mm. Boating. <laughs> uh, nautical pirate fishing. The first mixtape, I listened to it first. Chris, I, I got a call from Chris Doyler, Doyle. Uh, he called me up on the phone. He said, Carl, you need to get down here and you need to hear this track. So I, so I was like, listen, Chris. I'm in the club, you know I don't got time for this. He said, Carl, you're not going to regret it. Tell you what, if I waste your time, I'll buy you a steak dinner. And he later did, but that's a different story. So I go down there, I say, right, who's this, who's this new kid mixing fire that you've been, you've been yammering on about? He says to me, Carl, take off your negativity shoes at the door, come in here, listen to this. Meanwhile, he's got Husk in the booth. He's spitting fire like nothing I've ever seen. So I got, I go like this. I go, I look at Chris and then I look at Husk and I look at Chris and I go, damn! White boy's got the moves! So, Husk in there, he's doing his thing. Champagne, complimentary of the house, of course. We're sitting there, we're doing our thing and we're, we're in the mixing side of things. And I say to Chris, I go, looks like we're going to be getting that steak dinner after all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, no, then, so I saw Husk, he was in the booth, th there was some really good stuff going on, when I, when I first actually, so that was when I first heard it, but then I, I, when I actually 
for her to the completed finished product of the mixtape, I was um I thought it was good. Um questionable at times. Um I like the overarching theme of Donna. Uh this is a real it's a real tale. There's a lot of behind that story, you know. If you look in behind, you know, it's it's there's some good music and beats and there's some great, but like the lyrics below are really, there's a kind of a, I don't want to say, I, I sort of a, I mean, Hoss goes into a soliloquy about his kind of inner turmoil with Donna. He's trying to come to terms with who she is. Meanwhile, you know, who is she? I don't know. Do you? Do you? I, I think the themes of Donna were originated in Cult Off. I think that that might be that might be I might be making that up, but we watched um, the film Abba. No, Mamma Mia, and um, we all got very drunk watching Mamma Mia, and took our trousers off. And I think we had to drink every time they said Donna. It's not so much who is Donna; it's more what is Donna. Um, I think it's about, you know, she could be anyone. I'm a Donna, you're a Donna, Ian himself is a Donna, perhaps Owen, who knows really, that's the point, it could be anyone. I want to say that Donna is Donna from Mamma Mia, the character, um, but I mean Donna could be anyone. Um, apparently it turns out it's Donna from Mamma Mia, but I wasn't told. Uh, so funny. Where did he go? It's like, what's going on in his face? Where did he yeah, go? Yeah, it's loud. First of all, I just eat them. Do you want these? Well, yeah. Do you want to record? Here, Dee. I need to figure it out first. Did you get me? Did you get me? Yeah, it's just on the kitchen table. It's the smoothie. Well, it's like a smoothie. I thought it was a Yeah, and then the crisps are too, obviously. Oh, thanks. Figured the fuck out. <laughs> Ready? I think we might need to layer some more stuff underneath it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to hear what oh, I'm perfect. saying. Oh, yeah. perfect. Spider bursts out of it. Is it recording? I just wanted to. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. Never on one, but I had a go. Starts off fast, can't change his head slow. Bit like a weed to dodge with a board. Me and a mate, and I'm real mature. Insincere to the point of nausea. Best goal. Mackenzie McCall. <laughs> it peaked so much, so recently. Mackenzie McCall. Seriously,
you know, that one, one was talking about being nervous. That came from a place of real. Yeah, I don't want to get stuck on the same thing for too long. That's the only thing. Yeah, I know, but that can be better. Yeah. Like, I can yeah, see right. in his eyes, he bald, was nervous. Yeah. Fuck That's it. really fucking weird, isn't it? I'm caught in the mud, so back at 82. A traveling man in a caravan said, This is the bike for you. He was looking for a hundred while I gave him 32. Took her for a spin up the Kennegat Road and my god, she feckin' flew. <laughs> I drove her into Newbridge looking for a couple of hearts. Alloy wheels, a sat nav, and a new push button start. Heading out to Robertstown for bacon girl and the beer. Coming down the hill of Valen, she hit the ton in second gear. I was riding across the turn nice and slow. The guards pulled in behind me, Sergeant Kelly, don't you know? I said, oh, I'm just my lord, gonna hit the nitro hard. By the time the sporting group gets cross, I parked in Brady's yard. <laughs> I really like that the clear flinch is going to be very obvious. Do you have any ideas? I, I, I really wish Matt's Trump bone was here because right after that, it would be really funny to go into. I got my own drum bone. <laughs> I got a bone to <laughs> I mean, turkey dinosaurs come on my mate. What the? Uh, me and the turkey dinosaurs. No, I went down to the Are they actually turkey? Yeah. Well, like, I thought it was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Since when do people eat turkey and they're kind of this Christmas? In the shape of a dinosaur phone. I tried one. Um, I'm really glad that I found my earphones today. It's been a really productive day <laughs> and I'm really happy to spend it with my friends. Kid and he just turns around after his friend does a scooter trick and he says, That was legitness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I know. Is there a fucking jack in the box? Nah, that's a music box. Did I fucking ask you? <laughs> Nah, it's a fucking music box like. Ah, sweet one. Thirty-two, I'm ninety. 
Democratic Union is party. Probably in the piece. Probably like from like. I'm gonna do like a lot of time on the piece. No guitar? <laughs> yeah, they some burning. I really do drop eat. They just have to drink. I'll believe they're just really like, they're, 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 they're way too loose. Yeah. Yeah. The birthday? Why, well, it's the 3rd of July, my boy. Who's the birthday? It's the 3rd of July. Arlene Foster. Is it? That was very recent. Happy birthday, Arlene! The 3rd of July. Arlene Foster on the 3rd of July. I wonder if she's ever been drunk. <laughs> that picture of like dancing and the like ball <laughs> thing, you know. Is that she one pissed? Of you know? Is she pissed? In the photo? Is she like, is it like a photo of her where she's clearly drunk? Or is she dancing? Oh know. yeah, that one of her right. yeah. yeah, like dancing. I'm sure there's just like, a bit of whiskey. <laughs> a bit of brandy, she probably had brandy. She probably had a hot port. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> she actually does like a drink though, apparently. Who was I with her? Someone. And she was like, they were like, the DUP wasn't like that. And she was like, who gives a fuck with the DUP thing? <laughs> but. Who, who, what? <laughs> I don't know. Harleen said, you, what the fuck? You give a fuck with the DUP thing? Ian Paisley Jr. bought you some of the pint once. Oh yeah, I remember him telling us this story. Ian Paisley Jr. <laughs> fucking circus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was trying to remember that word the other day because there was someone really funny to describe as a cert the back and think of the Kevin. word that really annoyed me. Kevin's the ultimate greeny cert. <laughs> Doesn't feel like he stabbed me in the back. It feels like he stabbed me in the front. Yes. It's... Yeah, I would say. I think the first one definitely is. Um, the second one, I've only listened to the second one a couple of times now. Um, I think it is probably still got a um, few political things in there, but I think the first one was a bit more explicit. Uh, I think the Husk music is... Um, it's more of social politics, isn't it? So, you know, like, is it okay to desecrate your dead? Is it okay to talk about Sharknado's killing people, you know? He's really pushing the boundaries of what it is to be, um... You know, I mean, we need to deal with those Sharknado's. The government needs to stand up. Um, and the force will awaken. So I think it is political, yeah. I mean, how, how political is the human condition? How political is, is fear, is anger, is lust? Maybe like an old shark question. Lean! <laughs> young Lean Foster. Young Lean Foster. Young Lean Dubwa. For saying that the DUP will always strive for the best deal for Northern Ireland and its people. But equally, we want the best for all of the United Kingdom. And these are challenging times. Our United Kingdom and indeed our very way of life are under threats from extremists. Negotiations on our exit from the European Union are about to commence. 
and we now face uncertainty at Westminster. The Prime Minister has spoken with me this morning. I'd, I'd go and say, you know, it's just completely apolitical, the man believes in nothing. He would be just yelling shit about Theresa May and, and personally not actually wanting to do anything to Theresa May. <laughs> he, he doesn't actually give a shit, it's just something to say. There is, there is no God on this mixtape. God has very much abandoned us. I think most art in itself, whether it intends to or not, does make a political statement by being art, I feel. So I think that kind of idea of criticizing like um, celebrity culture, criticizing like the obsession with like um, wealth or like materialism, I think that is political statement. Maybe not necessarily criticizing, but I suppose kind of like pointing it out and like displaying it for what it is, and it is at times kind of ridiculous and it's almost like self satirizing Many people see a parallel between the terrible Sammy Wilson was conducted by those who are associated with Sinn Sinn Fein over the years in the United Kingdom and don't forget as I pointed out child killers first visited the Manchester area in the form of the IRA for which Sinn Fein have never apologized for which they have never shown any remorse and I, I think and that there's well, it's a stark reminder when we see we the effects of modern day here we could put that in and just overdub it with some like trap ad libs Skip! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so good. It's a zenith of political mind games. His zenith of political mind games. He calls out a lot of people on that track. Um, particularly, well, actually, on the newer on the newer mixtape, especially, there's definitely a, it's even more so. I feel like he's geared it up. To a whole new level. There's been a lot more mentions of Arlene Foster, a lot more mentions of Theresa May. Loves Arlene, loves Theresa May, that old old women's club. Um I don't know if you'll ever get to see the footage, but there's some not on footage of him discussing his relationship with the dynamic duo, where he basically describes his love affair with Theresa May and Arlene Foster. Um, I think it's a fantasy of his. Um, I don't know if he's pro. That's that's the thing with it. I don't know. It, it's very political, but I don't know who he supports or what angle he's coming from. I don't know if he's pro DUP, anti DUP. I just think he loves it, personally. Owen's very politicized. Uh, um. Pro Trump, anti hit. I don't really understand what he means when he says it, but he just says it. Um, I mean, do what you want, you know. He's, they think more about this. <laughs> I feel like I'm also. Yeah, one's a very politicised person. Um, uh, I wouldn't say he's a Trump fan. I would not right say that. I would never say that. By the way. Um, but he does claim to be a Trump fan. Um, I don't think he means it. I don't even. I'm not even sure he knows who Donald Trump is. I'm one hundred percent honest with you. But um, he he likes to cause controversy with his work. Um, the mixtape is a prime example of that. Um, his piece on Jessica Simpson resulted in numerous lawsuits. Um, just, uh, and that was in 
ten minutes. Um, I'd like to say he's he's doing the right thing, he's spreading the right message, but um, I I can't in all good conscience say that out on camera. I can't. I'm sorry. Um, sorry. Siri, set a timer for 10 minutes! Okay, 10 minutes of counting. Yeah, no, he's a very politicized man. He, he's very politicized, yeah. <laughs> It's because see on the thing you can take like separate outputs of each of the drum songs. Each of the drums have their own yeah. volume. So, yeah, yeah. Oh my it. god, speaking of separate outfits, I'm gonna put on my second. <laughs> <laughs> At the minute though, I've just got like a stereo out. Well I'm not gonna be the only one sitting here in these old things. <laughs> right, come on. Ian, you got a shirt I can borrow or sorry, oh, oh sorry, you're the fly on the wall. <laughs> I'll just make myself uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm gonna actually start trying to mix the drums a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Hoo! Ha! Skip! Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? Good? Or good? Let's see. Is there no other time? Yeah. Come on, I'm like, I myself. <laughs> Some jammies here? Or? Oh, sorry, I know. <laughs> I guess you, buddy, loud and clear. Woody comments, us. snide remarks, um, the pretty face of the organization. Um, here to give a general good buzz, keep you? people in check. Yeah. Yeah. I would like. Nice cracks and jokes to keep people motivated. Um, yeah. You got vape that we use sometimes too? I'm more important here than you might think. I always thought of you as like the brute for the slice of the operation. The uh, <laughs> the hunk. The honey. The honey. Whereas I would be yeah. the the salt. The salt. Yeah. The, the salt. salt. <laughs> but when you put honey and salt together, you don't get salted caramel, but you get the salted honey, essentially. The cousin of salted caramel. Uh, <laughs> what a bad time. Yeah, and, uh, and, uh, think of all the bees who died to eat your honey. You pig. Lost honey. You're a vegetarian, someone actually. The last the four lines of my Arlene Foster rap are good. Um, and genuinely a fucking animal. I love God, Jesus, and he's so real. Crown badge on my tits. Catch me in July dancing to pieces and bits. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> pieces and bits. <laughs> oh, man. It's a bit too much for me, I think. A bit of rich for my game score. <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> Tits. <laughs> Fuck me. He was stank. He was stank. Window off the door. 
I was sitting waiting <laughs> Sit by <laughs> <in> the park <laughs> Been 15 since of round 3 But I'm still wondering about you <laughs> On my own, on my own once more I'm waiting to get Where? to Who every lyric from Alone Again through like a thesaurus and then I'll sing that Oh, oh, translate it into like Vietnamese and translate it back. Oh, that's even better. Do you have them written down anywhere that you could send me? So they don't have to rewrite it all? Yeah, probably do. Give me a second, I'll look. Is it, is it, I'm gonna, I was gonna ask, but it's not. It's fine, it's 5pm. I am not damaged goods. I am in the Northern Ireland Assembly for the Democratic Unionist Party. And I'm from Tyrone. I'm a working country politician with tits. But I can't make a decision. I'm always good, I'm never rude, I love my three kids and my man, I eat flesh and I have tits and I'm a genuinely a fucking animal, I love God, Jesus, and he's so real, crown badge on my tits, catch me in July dancing to pieces and bits. Yeah, yes. that's, that's, that's fucking it. You know, like, I was saying other shit was it. That's, that's like, yeah. Because a lot of people have said to me before, like, I thought, oh, yeah, that's what you call it.
the fame has gone to his head. Yeah, well, Owen's ego has always been um, a confusing thing. You know, for those around him, does he love himself? Does he hate himself? Is he, who is he? Um, I would say the mixtape's impact on his ego has, um, if anything, split it further. I would say Owen is, you know, one day, you know, he's he's the king of his own world, you know, he, he doesn't give a fuck if it's chicken or it's fish. And then other days he's so sure it's tuna and he hates himself for that, you know? So I think it's, you know, through the creative process of getting this music out of him, he's discovered a lot of dark things about himself. Yeah, uh, he's changed, definitely, notably. He was very decadent, sort of hedonistic beforehand, you know, so the fame, the money, the women, um, the men, the boys, and the animals, like, my gosh. <laughs> uh, they, they were all there long before the mixtape. Long before. Most certainly, yes. Husk's ego has both literally and metaphorically blown up. Um, he, he's, it's, I wouldn't say he's not himself anymore, but he, he started, you know, he started speaking a bit with a American accent. At first, I thought it was a joke, and but he, he he's been doing it now for about three or four months. It's it's definitely not a joke. He's very snow, man. No, I don't, I don't think his ego has been affected. I think, um, yeah, I think he, he kind of, you know, it wasn't really him in that mix I think he was kind of like portraying a kind of satirical character, maybe like kind of trying to satirise that concept of like celebrity. Because I feel like a lot of the point of it was he was kind of coming to it being like, yeah, this, this is my mixtape, I'm famous. If someone says they're famous, is that a self-defining thing? You know, are, are they then therefore famous? So I think, you know, yeah, I think it's a character. I don't really think it necessarily ever touches like the essence of Husk himself. Yeah. We get it. He's an artist. He's doing great stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone loves him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in the club. People asking him for, you know, selfies. Uh, have you asked him for selfies? Yeah, selfies with Husk. They get annoyed by, like, charge for that. But um, really, yeah, no, like, his ego's definitely been inflated to the point of lunacy. Definitely, but that's what you need, is it not? You can't do art without Mega. Wait for a couple. <laughs> you, Paul, do you think you're gonna do a chill music? Oh, sorry. What? Do you think you're gonna do a chill music? Uh, a chill music? What does that mean? Music tonight, but a chill one. Oh, fucking Sunday. Music at Thompson's. Probably not, like. Storm Mitchell's gone. Storm Mitchell's gone. Twice in one week's a bit much. I just haven't been in ages, but like... Yeah, I really want to go. I really want to go. I haven't Who been cares like what you Thompson's want? in ages. I mean, um, two Thompson's in one week is maybe a bit bloody... A bit bloody much, you know what I'm saying? Uh, are you up for music game? Is that a... Possibly? Stone Mitchell's gone. There's even a reason why I'm asking if people are going is because I want to go find <laughs> this style for some obviously. Oh, oh I get I think he wants everyone to stare at the camera and keep addressing him. That was legit. Ian! <laughs> well, that was legit. <laughs>
I feel like I'll probably go much louder than that. When yeah, the time no. Comes. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that's the kind of. That's what I'm at. You can't. You can't just. You can't just do it at like a moment's notice. It's a part of the fucking process. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Get off my it's back. It's not a machine. All right, come it's on. Like your slave. Okay. Is it too loud? <laughs> Now, obsessed with uh, Husk's art style. I think it's really unique and um, I think he is super creative and has an ability to do art that a lot of people his age can't actually wrap their head around. A lot of people older as well. Like I think the creativity is the biggest part of him and he doesn't necessarily need to have a massive thought process when he's making art. He just wants to make art a lot of the time. He, he loves making art. Husk's art style is he, the man's a visionary. Um, the only problem is his vision is trash. But you know, 
I think it's... Oh, sorry. At, at the end of the day, he's, he's doing something that other people aren't. He's testing the boundaries. Um, sometimes I don't know... I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. And I don't even think he does most of the time either. It just kind of comes out. This one's on a much more easily folded piece of paper. I believe this one's of an old flame. It almost looks different every time I see it. Man. Terrified of my own creating. <laughs> Me? Oh, oh shit. These boxers are inside out like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not good, like. Oh. Fucking hell. Do you mind? This is body hearing this moment. God, I need a shower. There's something written on your arm there. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, it's someone wrote husk wrote <laughs> husk on my arm. Yeah. Why? Clearly. <laughs> Marking my territory. Piss <laughs> <Yes>, on him. <laughs> 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 <Scumbag>. <laughs> Brother, not get pissed on. Don't try it on me, man. <laughs> This is I. This is on You can't be fucking filming me like this. Did I do it right, Superhands? Did I do it right? Husk, I think for the next part of your mixtape, you should um, make it more melodic because there's been a lot of singing so far. My friend. Yeah, actually, we haven't really had any singing. The, the next section should friend. be soft and yeah, yeah. This is this like is true. We write like a, write like a Beatles song or something. We haven't had any crooning yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like a little ballad or something. We've yeah. had no scat either. The third section of the first mixtape was the the Bohemian Rhapsody bit. Yeah. That was quite soft, so maybe we should take it down yeah. in the tone of our original creation. Yeah. Uh, How long are you thinking? Like this, like ten minutes again, or maybe a little longer this time. See what Bulbous kind of. Yeah. yeah. More yeah. rounded off than finished. Ooh. It's like we've sandpapered it, but we haven't <coughs> completely varnished it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's all like sand. Alright, I'm gonna go back up and back to work. Back to work. You can't play an instrument. How are you going to get back to work? Is existence real? If our thoughts aren't real, then how are my ideas? Thinking about music. Thinking about music. Bracket it, close bracket. A lot of my early inspiration came from the spirit world. They tell me what to do and what to write and uh, how to go about doing what I wanted to write and they tell me what to do and what to write and they would tell me how to go about that too. And then um after that, I relied on a ghostwriter for a lot of my music because it was just easy. It, 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 I didn't have to do it after that, so then it was easier for me anyway. And then after that, it was it was quite drug fueled for a while. My music, my creative process was 
quite a few of my narcotics and stuff, but then after that, then the inspiration just came from. Why is this on Bobby? Why does it keep turning on? Is it you? <laughs> yeah, it's me. Can you see Franz's face? I'm not turning it the wrong way. Don't go breaking my heart I couldn't if I tried Oh honey, if I get better Oh baby, you're not that kind <coughs> Don't go breaking my heart Oh honey, if I get restless Oh baby, you're not that kind Mm-hmm <clears throat> uh, One, two, three, four Summer days, walking in the park Having some fun, fun in the sun Summer days having some fun. Summer days having some fun. It's the worst thing that Husk's ever done. Um, the worst thing Old Bennett's ever done. I don't know if I was quite fit for a camera, Ian. Um. The worst thing I've ever seen him do. Probably just when he. You know, when he made an attempt on my life. I don't like that face he does, you know, the like, one, that makes me feel sick when he does that face. That's, oh god, it's horrible. Uh, one time we were at Steph McHenry's house and uh, he ordered a uh, Domino's pizza. Um, but just the toppings that he was putting on that pizza was absolutely disgusting. Like he was putting on olives, he was putting on like barbecue sauce, he was putting like, just a weird combination of flavors and then when it arrived he was um we were all a bit disgusted at it really because it was just quite gross and he ate the entire thing and then passed out so yeah he actually um he gave me the scar with his um his back teeth molars i think you call them i just you know wrong place wrong time i just uh, you know he got me he got me between his teeth and he left uh, he left me with this a wee reminder of a uh, husk There was one time um, he got a lift home with me and my mum and he just started spitting in the back of the car. This is true as well. Um, he'd had one or two many uh, Bud Lights and he was just like spitting. He didn't know what he was doing, but he was just spitting in the back of the car. And like I was sitting in the front of my mum and like we were kind of just we were pretending it wasn't happening, but he's <laughs> Like fucking spitting his heart out. I mean, fair play, he's a bit tipsy, but I mean, 
I still haven't. I'm still expecting to get paid back for that, uh, for that bill. There has been times that I've felt personally attacked by what he's done. Um, there was this time that I, I, I actually was in a, um, I was, I was in a, a kind of, uh, what is it, like a kids play park. Um, I was with my little niece, uh, so she was playing. It was one of the places you have to pay into ball pits, big slides, you know that kind of, that kind of thing. So Husk walks in. Um, and I'm like, oh look, it's Husk. I better say hello. So I go, uh, so I give him a wave, and he looks at me, but he just looks right through me, ignores I'm there, keeps walking. At this point, I realize there's no child with him. Um, walks past the desk, doesn't pay. The woman tries to talk to him, but he just walks on past, and then he flips her off. I uh, so I was just watching this. I I don't know what he's doing. He walks across, and he he, he takes out, he he opens up his trousers. And he takes out a full steak dinner he had in there. And he just starts pouring it into the ball pit. And these kids, they're screaming, they're trying to get away. And he's, he's he just keeps pouring it all. Like, it's hitting the kids. And, like, these are small kids. This was maybe two, three-year-olds. Um, yeah, they, they, they were covered in, in gravy and all sorts of cutoffs of what I assume was... A cr once a steak dinner, but it had, it really had rotted. Um, so then, but the, so when he was done, he throws the plate at the wall. Co comes over to me, says to me, "Yo, mate, you see that? Ha ha, lass." And I go, "Uh, like that's a bit not on." But then he's like, he caught. He kissed me. But it wasn't on the mouth. It was right there in front of all the children. He just... There was a lot of damages done that day. He just dropped ten grand on the floor. In loose... In loose change. And walked out, and I haven't saw him since. This was three days ago. He'd had a few, you know. He um, he loves the vine, as he says. You know, he'd had a couple of bottles of wine, Bockfast, tonic wine, amongst other things. And he, uh, I think he confused me because I was wearing a red jumpsuit at the time for his punching bag uh, at home. Not in the club, in the MMA club where he, uh, where he works. Well, am I allowed to say that? So it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a, a side hustle, you know, he, he mentors. Um, so he just, you know, he just uh, let it all out on me. Um, I'd get 65% uh, of my, uh, <laughs> my face and skull reconstructed. He's a strong man, you know. I've actually seen him... Uh, you know these um, bodybuilder types that can, you know, crush watermelons in the sort with uh, with their thighs. I've seen him do it with his bare hands. One hand, two watermelons. <laughs> Incredible. Okay, I think we're ready to move on to the next section. Any thoughts? Uh, well, we were thinking well, soft. We were thinking yeah. soft. I was soft, thinking maybe get the fin fight. Yeah, I think so too. Can you too. connect like, this? Look, I'll go one. <coughs> big one. I'll wait, the synth won't, this, that won't give us much soft mm. sounds though, that'll all be quite aggressive. Things. Maybe less soft, maybe more just upbeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. No, but like, poppy. Yeah, bubblegum. No. Boom. Got to let Boom. you. Yeah, that's very poppy. Yeah, yeah, this is the one. Yes. Yeah, this, this kind of thing. Yeah. So like, poppy almost. Yeah. But like, weird for, I don't know what it is. Poppy kind of.
Ça va.
What do I think of the, the quality of the new mix here? <laughs> I, I think it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> I, what, do I, what do I think of the, the quality of the new mix too? I, I think it's the best thing I've ever produced. <laughs> I think it's the best thing I've ever produced. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's a solid piece of work. Alright, yeah, I got it. 